Hi, this is Debbie and I've got a different video for you today. I often get asked how I take my card photographs and what I use as backdrops. So I'm going to take a look at what backdrops I've used in the past and which ones I'm using now. If this photography style of video isn't for you, then please join me in a couple of days when I will have another card video. When I first started taking pictures of the cards I made, I quickly realised that I didn't like the rich tones of the IKEA table I create on. Don't get me wrong, this table is great for purpose. It's really long and the white clean surface means I can happily splatter paints round without worry. However, the colour just wasn't doing it for me and I felt it competed with the cards I was trying to photograph. I must admit, I even cringe seeing the colour in this video, but today I want to keep things honest and real. Back to photographing cards then, and when I first started doing so, I used pattern paper as a backdrop for my photos. At the time, I think the one I used was by my mind's eye, but it's so long ago I can't quite remember and I don't think it's stopped anymore. However, there is a paper pack by Simple Stories from their Snap Basics range, which has a great array of wood patterns. I particularly like the Distress Wood one, which is called Aspen. The pack has eight sheets with wood patterns on one side and notebook style patterns on the reverse. And it comes in a really reasonable price point of around $7, which is a little under £6 currently. Here's a couple of photos taken with the pattern paper as a backdrop with a wooden cheese board with a nice grain for the base. I used the pattern paper setup for quite a while, but then I started visiting the local DIY store to see what they had and I made up this wood panelling. I got a pack of the panelling, cut it down and nailed it to a couple of buttons before whitewashing it. Now I haven't used this panelling in quite some time and it's been out in my garage and needs a coat of fresh paint, but hopefully you get the idea of what is possible with very little expenditure. The basic setup for taking photographs is the same for all these backdrops. I place the camera on a tripod, and if you don't have a tripod, a sturdy surface will do. And then I often use a piece of wood or similar to stand my card on. A while back I found this cheese board from a local store which had a nice grain on the side. I place the card on the wood and then set a backdrop behind it, and usually I add a few flowers or vases to add interest. Here's a few photos using the whitewash panelling. I had a panelling piece for both the base and the backdrop, all made from the one pack which I bought at around the £20 mark. After using the white panelling for a while, I found that getting a true white in photographs can be tricky. It's easy for it to either look grey or overblown. So I decided on using some click together flooring panels in a nice neutral grey. Again, I bought just one pack of the flooring, cut them to size and nailed them to buttons. And here's a few photos using the click together flooring. Again, I had a panel for both the base and the backdrop. My next experiment was to cover an old shelf with plaster, roughly swipe the surface level, but leaving a lot of texture and then when dry I painted it with an off-white chalk paint. On occasion I've used a slate floor tile to give a richer dark tone to some photographs and another alternative might be a wooden shelf such as this one. Here's a couple of photos. In the first I used the slate tile as a base with plant pots behind and in the second I used the plaster panel. The DIY store really is a fabulous place to explore different backdrop options. The advantages of these setups were that they were larger and sturdier than the 12x12 card but the disadvantages were they were weighty and very bulky to store. The pieces were very large and heavy to look around whenever I wanted to take a picture. In the autumn of last year, I received an email from a photographer, Lindsay James, who I had taken a course with in the past. She was branching out into producing lightweight, photorealistic boards with photographers, makers, artists, creators and bloggers in mind. I was really excited at the possibilities this new product afforded and ordered one to see what they looked like. And I've been really impressed and I've been using them ever since. The boards have high resolution photographs printed to a one by one scale as some of the backgrounds that Lindsay uses in her photography business. I've since expanded my collection and have a range of the photo boards in both the 40 and 60 centimetre sizes. Here's a card I made for the Hero Arts blog hop the other day on one of the 40 centimetre boards and as you can see there is plenty of room around the card to take a picture and even add in some accessories to tell the story of creating the card too. There are a range of different designs and I've bought a few of the more neutral toned ones in the smaller size this is drift weathered wood, cement and marble. 40 centimetres is a little under 16 inches, so bigger than your usual pattern paper. Then there are the 60 centimetre size designs, which are a little under 24 inches. And this whitewash wood, I think, is my all-time favourite to date and was the first board I bought. It's a nice soft white wood with just enough detailing to add interest, but without it being overpowering. I've also bought the farmhouse wood floor, the putty one, the splash grey, and also the grey spotlight boards. Currently I like to use the whitewash wood as the floor to my scene and then prop the splash grey board up against my Big Shot machine. I then place my camera on a tripod, stand the card in place 
and add some flowers and such in the background. Here's a picture I took the other day where I didn't use my camera settings to blow the background as much as I usually do. I hope this helps you to see better how I set my photos up. When taking an overhead or flat lay photograph, I place the card down, sometimes on a wood slice such as this with nice texture in the bark, and then I take my picture with the camera directly above. Here's a few of the photographs I've taken since the autumn using these photo boards. I find them great for straight on photos as well as flat lay ones. These are some of my favourite photo boards from the past few months. From top left, whitewash, splash grey, farmhouse, putty, marble and cement. However, just this week Lindsay has released some new designs which are on pre-order and shipping next week. Again from top left, there's Merino, Riviera, Patisserie, Sale, Earl Grey and Antique Tintile. I've already put in my order for the top three boards and there's a 10% discount on my blog if you're tempted to order any yourself. I'm in the UK, as are the photo boards company, although I know a lot of people have ordered the boards from all over the world. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the photo backdrops I've been using and given you a few ideas if you're looking for something similar. I'll leave links in the YouTube description below as well as a link to the coordinating blog post over at lamedudadesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today and if you've enjoyed this tutorial I'd be delighted if you'd subscribe to this channel. Thanks and I'll see you next time.